the order. Um, yeah. All right. Hey, I got to go because we're um, we're about to start class. Here to make sure you set up properly. Yes. Okay, love you too. All right, thanks. Bye. Um, our owls are, it's not on. Oh, wait, oh, here it is. Here it is. Got it. Ah, but I'm bumps. Morning, Stu. Morning. Um, Robert still has the invoice from the Megan. Yeah. Okay, so Megan, I will um I'll manage the Zoom so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Unless you put unless you like it. That's fine. Can I just open up different YouTube yeah. videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, why don't we do you wanna okay. Are you all from people? Or you're good. All right, anything else? Good? We're good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, uh, Joy is bringing in the... It's learning water. It's on the floor. Okay, good. Okay, thanks, Stu. Feel free to join us for brunch if you like. In the bottom on the counter.
and then we go back to the pros. Okay, so just give me the, the key. Yeah. All right, go get to them, everybody. So glad to see all of you here today. Um, and uh, I, I'm excited to people. to you, uh, student Rabbi Megan Gruber who has been with us the last few days. She's leaving this afternoon, uh, but before she leaves, um, she has the opportunity to teach us uh, this morning and our about prayer and uh, something that she has chosen. Um, so Megan is uh, going to be ordained this uh, spring from Hebrew Union College uh, at the Los Angeles uh, campus. She's originally from Seattle, uh, Washington. And um, we've really been enjoying having her here the last few days and getting to, to know her. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to Megan after, let's say our blessing for Torah study together. Karen uh, Siegel is eating her breakfast, uh, uh, chewing her breakfast. Uh, all righty, everyone. Well, welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, as if you and get to know me, you will learn that I love Jewish music. Um, and music is the way that I connect to Judaism. And so throughout my rabbinical student career, I've been thinking a lot about how to teach liturgy through music. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to look at some music and some um, contemporary Jewish melodies to, um, I have planned for two different prayers. We'll see, we'll start with the first one, see how far we get, and then we'll see if we get to the second one. So we're going to skip a little bit of a head from what you all have been doing um, with Rabbi Stoller. So we're going to go to page 32. So we'll start in the Sidur on page 32, and we'll look at the original prayer. And then we'll look at two interpretations or two melodies for the prayer. And then we'll kind of do a compare and contrast after we explore each of them individually. Um, so we'll be on page 32 in the middle. Uh, is there a volunteer that wants to read it? rather than me, or I can read it as well. Oh, it's great. great. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who formed the human body with skill, creating the body's many pathways and openings. It is well known before your throne of glory that if one of them be wrongly opened or closed, it would be impossible to endure and stand before you. Blessed are you, Adonai, who heals all flesh, working wondrously. Thank you very much. So this is Asher Yatsar. Um, it is a prayer that's in our morning liturgy. It is also a prayer that many people say after using the bathroom. Fun fact. Um, so what are your first thoughts about the English translation of the Hebrew of this prayer? Yes. Um, Say that again. What do you say it's meant to be sung? Is that what you're saying? You think that this thing was this um be more meaningful if we sang the prayer? Um there's different there's different melodies for the prayer that we'll get to in a moment, sure. but this is just the Hebrew. This is the um official traditional prayer um that is more chanted than sung. Yeah. Hey, hi, welcome. I'm Courtney Silver. So I'm not Courtney Silver. So nice to see you. Um, so I'm saying that uh, my view is that perhaps if, you know, leading the day, um, you are, you know, you're starting a new, uh, because you mentioned going to the bathroom, you're excreting almost like the past, and you're really starting the new one, getting the rate of the. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> So there's some sort of, you know, healing process. 
Yeah. The GI thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm just going to go with um, um, the aging process. Um, just simply, or you know, or, or even watching, watching when my kids were young. Um, you know, just just simply, um, you know, something. You know, little kid gets a cold, and you. you that you, you were discussing something else, but yeah, it's actually pretty disgusting when you have to uh, take a, a you know a pediatrician would know um, <laughs> when you have to clean out a nose. Um, but you know, a little kid who can't breathe because um, they have a stuffed up nose. Um, it's amazing how well this system works, and when it doesn't quite work, um, it, it 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 makes the rest of life hard. And I you know I, I think. I know that um, some of the prayers going on will have to be more spiritually, but um, but not just you know, you know, physical, physical. You know, you know when your emotional is not working well, that will. So. I see someone on Zoom, so I want to let Thanks, Zoom Lee. for Shelly. Go ahead, Shelly. Um, when I look at this prayer, I see that the focus is all on Adonai. It doesn't really say anything about the hu humans themselves. Um, and the, all the praise goes to Adonai for creating us and for creating our body. And, you know, we know um, from uh, the daily prayers that um, it goes right into Elohai Nishama for the soul. Um, so, so the focus in this particular translation, which my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that this is the more direct translation and on the other page are the interpretive. Um, so that's just my comment about the focus being completely on praising Adonai. It all comes from. I saw a hand somewhere in this side of the room. Yes. Um, I have a real problem with this prayer. Um, my husband had multiple sclerosis. Um, his body deteriorated um, over a course of many years, and we were very lucky that it was many years. But when we would come to services and we would read this, um, I had I just have a real problem thinking that it would be impossible to endure and stand before you um, because Bill spent every day of his life with gratitude and stood you know before God um, and so the the concept that that if these many openings were working that for some reason he couldn't. It's really, this has always been a problem for me. Yeah, it definitely is. One of the things that's here that I coach me is that sometimes we take things for granted. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we do. And it's actually when you look at it, um, we are a birth creation. You know, and we did that God for it. Yeah. Hi, I just want to address something that you just said because it touched my soul and my team. Um, Bill, um, I would say that we have the right to reinterpret the word stand um, as um, I always think I'm too loud. Um, but we can. I, I always think that we reinterpret the word stand. My grandmother, who raised me and who was such an important person in my life, used to say that an emmets can gain the gut. With the truth, you can go to God. But her interpretation of it was, with the truth, you can stand before God with courage. And, and, and I always thought that that was a really powerful because we're supposed to be shaking it off for the time. But if you're, if you're real, if you're truthful, if you're honorable, you can have the courage to stand for them both before God. Bill was a perfect soul. Bill was a beautiful, beautiful man. Um, and I know it's a delicate, delicate time for you right now. But I, I want you to know that I, he stood before God. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's interesting to read something um, that talks about, you know, the perfection of 
of our body being being a goal because it it it, it, it contradicts so much the emphasis on my healing, which I think is so much a part of our prayers and you know particularly in the reform movement healing services and an understanding of, of what we're asking for when we ask God for for healing. Um, um, it's it, it really, you know, the, the protection of the body being a part of your religious experience is, is sort of pagan. And I think that, you know, sometimes you can find, you know, little tiny um, bits of evidence of how, you know, we have a very old religion that did adopt ideas from the pagan religions around it thousands of years ago. Um, I just wanted to add, um, referring to the ability or inability to stand, that during our prayers and our services now, we say, please stand, whether in body or in spirit. So that incorporates. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think one of the amazing things is that we have the ability to interpret our prayers. Um, and we can interpret our prayers in different ways, and we'll see two different <clears throat> interpretations um, in a moment. So let's, we're going to transition to um, our first interpretation, and then we'll do our second, and then we'll come back together for all of them. Um, so let's, on the screen. let's start with the, I forgot that there's two. Let's do the the um, video. Okay. Yes, I'm not sure it's our. So um, for those of you on Zoom, you're going to listen to the words because I can't have the video on and the um, source sheet at the same time. Those of you in person, um, we're going to be on the first of the short source sheet. This is a Sherry at SAR. Um, if you don't have one, please share with a friend. Thank you for my life, body and soul. Be realized, I am beautiful and whole. I'm perfect the way I am, and a little broken too. And I will live each day as a gift I give to you. Zoom, we'll go back to the document so you will have the words. Those of us in person, we're at the top of our document. So Dan Nichols, um, for those of you who don't know, is a contemporary Jewish music artist, very well known in the youth and camping movement, um, lots of good popular hits. And this is um, his interpretation of our Sherry Tsar, um, this morning blessing. Um, so what do you think? First impressions, yes. I, I'm so glad you said the word youth. The first thought I had when I looked at it, having five teenage grandchildren, is the act 
of feeling good inside yourself and the and the confidence of who you are. That was my impression of that. It, to me, it was very moving. When you brought that up, Susan, my first impression when I started to read it in English had to do with it's almost like seeing the world through a child's eyes, you know, that 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 sense of newness and curiosity. Um, um, but the other thing that really uh, struck me is when he was singing the Hebrew and you know, we've discussed this before, but there's something about music, there's something about, you know, that vocalizing that just, for me at least, it just, you know, spoke to my heart. It really moved me tremendously. And, um, you know, so it doesn't matter, it's like opera, it doesn't matter that it's in a foreign language and we don't understand it because so often as reformed Jews, we say, well, we don't understand the prayers, you know, it, it's meaningless, but it just shows that, um, you know, in, in a sense, if we could go beyond that, it, it just, you know, it, it's just so beautiful. I saw your hand, then two, three, somewhere over there, and then four. So, <clears throat> my name is Arlene Evans. Hi, welcome. Um, what struck me about this, in contrast to what we were talking about before, is that he says, I'm perfect the way I am and a little broken too. That it acknowledges that maybe contrary to how we were reading this, the, the translation in the seat door, that we're not perfect people. That that's part of, okay, we have a structure or systems within us that works pretty well, like the hip bone connected to the thigh bone. And it's amazing that we live beyond five years old, I always thought. Mm -hmm. But we're we're not always perfect, and we have imperfections. But that it doesn't prevent us from um, living a holy or good life, and acknowledging God has given us whatever we have, and we should be grateful for that. All right, I remember some two of them were here. I think it's really nice. I was thinking of what you said as far as imperfection. And now the man's voice, you know, all due respect to him, is not technically pitch perfect, but neither are we. And also, um, it, it, he went down exactly very well with his sound tone. So almost a little bit more like feminine, and but it's sort of the peaks and valleys of life, but it's just like moving through with the music. So I can appreciate where you, you know, you, you like it. Because I, I'm not familiar with it, I'm really <clears throat> nice. So, yes. Uh, I, I want to reiterate what, what Susan said. Uh, I mean, giving our kids and grandkids self esteem, I mean, I can't imagine there's anything more important than that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm thinking of Mr. Rogers' song, Everyone Makes Mistakes, so why can't we do this? Yeah. I remember my, my daughter in her early 20s, and by the way, happy birthday, Rosie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, um, yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my daughter in her early 20s sends me, Dad, you know, I realize that everybody that I pass on the street has their own problems too. And I thought, my God, I wish I had been real. I mean, I know that now, but I didn't know that in my early 20s. And uh, I think the sooner that we can. Um, <laughs> Teach, teach folks that uh, we're all carrying certain burdens and none of us none of us is perfect, but yet we're meant to be imperfect and that makes us perfect. And I think that's part of what Dan Nichols is trying to say in that, in, in that phrase. I'm, I'm far from being young, but this speaks to me and how I see the human body, my life, and the gratitude I have for my life each day and for the things that I have in my family and friends and and all that that I received as I lived these 79 years. And um I would much rather sing this song than read this prayer. Yeah, I think yeah, in the corner. There's sort of a reversal here with the day is a gift. Usually, 
think of the day as a gift to us from faith to your almighty, and this reverses it to make the day a gift from us. Then I am some again. So um, I'm combining a little bit of for the young and for the old over there. Um, I, I'm the grandmother of a, a 90, I have four, but, but the oldest is 19 and he's away at college. And um, I gave him a very heartfelt talk when we were walking through uh, one of the schools. And I said, Look, I guarantee you, you are going to make mistakes. I guarantee you, you're going to do something that you'll be sorry for. I want you to learn to forgive yourself. Oh, I want you to learn, you know, how to, how to go forward from there and, and learn. Try not to do that one again, you know, and um, just don't do anything that could be stupid that you hurt yourself. But I guarantee you, you're going to make mistakes. And at this age, my age now, um, close, but not quite. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I think that that was, that's even good advice now. It really is that, you know, and I too, every day I, I go through my list in the morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've been going through all of this stuff. Um, and I'm very grateful for every healthy day or every day that I can do something that I love and be thinking of people I love or be with people I love. I it's it's a treasure. But that comes wisdom that's another Jewish expression. Wisdom comes after the years. So I wanted to give them a little piece of it now and share with everybody that you know this is something we can savor even when we're in our science. Right. There's a hand somewhere. Yes. <clears throat> I was thinking that, um, in a way, the sitter, I, I never realized, so someone, I think it was Judy, somebody on the Zoom said, God, what about God and your, and your mom, or God and your wife? No, excuse me, what about you and your wife, you and your child? It, it doesn't come to that in the sitter at all. It's all about you and God. So in a way, I'm thinking, you can shut out people. There's too much involved with God, right? What about mm -hmm. people? What about your wife? Ooh, isn't that a love song to God? What about a love song to your wife every day? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> right. Any other thoughts about this interpretation? Yes. Um, so Enough of you here know, um, actually both my sons are gay, um, but the the younger one, the older one, didn't really figure this out until much later on, but the younger one really suffered as a teenager. Um, and he had this little post-it um, that said, life sucks. And it was like, do I say something? Do I, you know, it's like, that's not, how, it's like, no, he gets to, and I didn't know this at that point. I didn't know why life sucked. But it's like, he gets to say that. And it was finally when he came home for his first semester at college <clears throat> that he took it down. But she was, she was saying, um, for the kids, um, and and uh, Howard, the kids who know they are different, and and the world doesn't want to accept that they get to be a little bit different. Thank you. My favorite part about this is that line: "I'm perfect the way I am, and a little bit broken too." I have woken up plenty of times looked in the mirror being like, that's wrong and that's wrong, but we're made the way we're made and we have to embrace the way that we were created and our bodies are perfect, even though 95% of us have some type of thing that we think is broken, whether it's actually broken or not broken. Um, we, your first thought is always to look in the mirror and say something's wrong. And this reminds you every morning that 
something's not wrong. You're created the way that you're supposed to be created. Oh, Zoom, Shelly, please. Me again. Um, so now I'm looking at both uh, the literal and the and and the song, which we actually I'm at BJBE where Rabbi Stoller used to be as assistant rabbi, <laughs> uh, and um, we sing the song uh, at our musical uh, morning Shabbat. Um, and I think what both have in common is that, and which I think is really important, is acknowledging um acknowledging uh how blessed we are um that it is god but also it doesn't do any good if you yourself aren't aware or don't acknowledge um and um in my own life i've always been extremely healthy very healthy my entire life and i felt fortunate about it but it was not until I uh, contracted a, a usually fatal cancer, and I'm now cancer free, uh, that I really, really knew what this prayer meant. Um, and that I acknowledged that I could do, I could, you know, be as healthy, and I do, I work on being as healthy as I possibly can. That's my end of it. But that really, it's up to I don't know. It's up to forces I don't even know about the environment, whatever it might be. There, whatever it is, it's beyond my control, and so it's a combination of both. Thank you. Welcome to the Um, that line about you know and. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, when I read, I'm perfect the way I am, and this, and and then, you know, that was like perfect. And then when it said, and a little broken too, and this harkens back to what, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to out. No, um, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So in a way, it, it, to me, it was almost like I sighed. It was almost, it was relief. I can, I can forgive myself for not being perfect. This is the human condition. And it was a good feeling. And I do love that line the best. Thank you. Um, Karen on the screen. Yes, thank you. Um, this has always been a very personal um, prayer to, to me. Um, I'd like to share that I had a beautiful younger sister, Claire who we did not know this until she was close to 50, was born with a very rare, not rare enough, genetic neurological disease complex called tuberous sclerosis complex. Um, and she suffered from tumors in the heart that created paroxysmal tachycardia, the heart would race to almost 200 beats a minute. In the brain, um, the kidneys, the skin, it's a wretched disease. Um, and there was never a more beautiful soul than my sister. She believed in a more traditional God than I ever did. I think she paid all our dues, <laughs> but she taught us about um, unconditional love. And that if ever there was a broken suffering body, it was hers. But her love, her faith, her kindness was just such an inspiration that there's the perfect being in a broken body. So, mm. I get it. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Yeah. I have two thoughts. One is light and one is here. It, what 
um, that he said about music. That's how children learn. I mean, music is a way of learning. The second thought is, with Dorothy said that we're going to make mistakes and things are and here we're a little bit broken. Some things are wrong. When I was going through a difficult time, Eileen Walk, who's an artist, made me a large book. And in each page, he divided. And one side of the page I was to write, and I still do it. This is nine years later. So one side of the page I was to write something good about myself and the day. And the other side I was to write what was bad. <laughs> was uncomfortable, what was broken. And it was such a, a, a concrete way for me to see how I was changing. Because as time went on, the good side was getting longer. In the beginning, the only thing I could write is I had coffee and a biscotti, that was it. And then as time progressed, the good side was longer. So it was a wonderful right. gift in a difficult time. Oh. Right. Any other thoughts about Dan Nichols' interpretation of our prayer? All right, we'll move on to number two. Um, this is written by Rabbi Josh Warshawski, who is a conservative rabbi. Um, and his goal was to create um, music for the conservative movement um, to be able to sing together. Um, I also just want to say that this uh, recording has a lot of different other musicians that they all kind of came together um, to write this. I'm pretty sure it was written out of COVID. And the words are in the second section of your name. Today for me is a new day on earth I live it in awe And wonder how everything works Should the grass cease to grow? Should the sun cease to glow? Should my heart cease to beat? I thank you again and again that my body's complete I can think I can breathe I can hope I can sneeze I can laugh I can cry I can pray for the wonder each day Yeah. 
and we, we've said it hundreds of times. And this introduction to the words and then the music of the words helped me. Now, maybe after I did this a hundred times, it would lose meaning too, but it worked for me today. Yeah. 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 So, is Terry here? No, no, she's not here. Okay. We were commiserating on what it feels like to, when you're recovering from a fractured rib, <laughs> which unfortunately I stupidly fell and fractured a rib. And the two things that were horribly painful were sneezing and laughing. Mm. And sneezing I could do without, although you can't stop it. But laughing I can't do without. And it was so painful, it's a constant reminder that something was definitely broken. And so when I read this, I said, oh yeah, I got that, I got that. <laughs> you know? And it really does make you on a much smaller level appreciate what one can take for granted <laughs> and realize how precious it really is. Taking a deep breath without getting that shock of pain. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how that makes you stop and appreciate what you got. Right. Other thoughts about this interpretation and version? Yeah, I think the entire thing is for me. It doesn't really help me to elevate myself, but it kind of a little depressing. So if I have that in the first thing in the morning with that melody, I'll get depressed. <laughs> See, I thought it was Tonda. The melody and what the fact we're singing it's just <clears throat> get through the day you woke up let's see what the day is going to bring and hopefully good because maybe yesterday was not so good you start up peacefully, peacefully and quietly and see what happens i like it okay. yeah and that took about it's like the the landscape of life mm -hmm. and when my mom remarked on you know the joys of Seeing a tree, the landscape, uh, no matter how pedestrian it is, it's still it's the simplicity. Or things are run like you said, more often than not, we revert to childhood. You know, things of innocence where we weren't plagued with plagues, you know, uh, real or as imagined, but our own uh, demons, if you will. And I think that if you take this and you reduce not who you are or yourself, but rather you live in it off. And to understand that although the uh although our own inner landscape um could be tread upon like the grass ceases to grow, the sun ceases to glow, that we, you know, I thank you again again for me, like that's very much mindful of being present in the moment and how important because it's so fleeting. Oh my god, we can have those eyes and innocence to see. Thank you. Yes, I I loved it. I I was um this was very emotional and made me feel I the word guilty that some days I don't feel this awe, you know, that I feel that I should feel this awe, and sometimes I don't. But listening to this, especially with the music, and you're so right, music does enhance the words that was my feeling i thought i i should really sing this or recite this now that was my we're all on youtube uh shelly on zoom thanks um <clears throat> so uh maybe jumping ahead a little bit but looking at all these interpretations uh, one of the things that made me really happy was to see these young musicians uh these young musicians singing and um i think maybe that josh Weinberg, he's a rabbi correct um well, but, rabbi, I, yes, he's yeah. a rabbi. but i i you know maybe all well, the other people i don't know maybe they're not even jewish whatever but they're singing it because this is clearly an extremely important prayer uh in our jewish tradition so important that we say it every single day and um 
And so this is maybe something that uh, when you're young, you might not think about, but if you are engaged in Jewish prayer, then you absolutely think about it, um, along with all the other ways in our service, uh, our daily blessings, uh, waking up in the morning, modani, all of that, um, that can center you and um, set your intention for the day, uh, because this is one of the first things that you say uh, when you get up. So that sets your intention for the day of being grateful. So I just love that and that these young people are uh, mirroring that. Thank you. Yes, they're all, they're all Jewish musicians. I think one other person is a rabbi or going to be ordained as a rabbi and the rest are just Jewish musicians that um, travel around the country. Um, yes. Uh, uh, you know, what I'm trying to be interested in, um, in comparison with the first one and the second one, the fact that um, are, as a group we seem to be more relating to the first one. Um, and in the first one, immediately God is recognized. I thank you um, for my life, body, and soul. In the second one, God is not recognized until the evening. Um, and I find for me, that's what's missing in the second part is that, um, and, I, and what I really like in the first part is the recognition of God role and our relationship with God um, that makes yeah. all of this you know happen and that the burden is not a hundred percent of ourselves. Mm. That if you look um you know I was still if you look at him or he talked about what God was to him and the thing that he said was that God is like my very best friend. Um, and, you know, and I carry that with me. Um, and I think that if we look at her me, um, you know, I thank you, my very best friend. Like we, we lean on each other. Um, and that to me is missing from the second one because mm. it's not recognized until the Hebrew. Sure. One and then two. I, I know I spoke already on this and I don't need to come up but Nina, the very reason that you point out that one works for you is 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 the opposite. I mean, mm. for those who already recognize and accept God and feel God is their friend, then yeah, let's start right in with God. Just thanking God. For those of us who are still struggling with is there a God. The second one says, hey, look at all this stuff that you just woke up to. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Give it another thought. Consider, the, consider who may have created this. So that's why two works for me and one works for you. Yeah. 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 All right. There's, go ahead. Do you have some? Well, future Rabbi Megan, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this uh, having music. Uh, and it's uh, it really, uh, you know, last week, Vicky was talking about Corona's. I took a stress test that I was really uh, anxious about in months. I passed. And then uh, got down, you know, going down, you know. So I was thinking, how do you maintain a, you know, people take drugs. To be high all the time, and in a way, coming here is like a high, a bit of a high, you know. So <laughs> I think that's the high. Thank you for, the, for everything. It's, it's a lot. It's it a is. Lot. It is. That's a lot. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Other thoughts about this third one? All right. Now I want to bring it all together. I know we've started doing some comparisons. But now think about all of these three as three different interpretations. It's all the same prayer. It's all coming from the same Hebrew words, but Hebrew is a very fascinating language when one word can mean seven different English words. Um, so um, comparing, contrasting, I know some people like one better, some people like two better. 
other thoughts you have about bringing them all together? Yes. I would say they speak to me in terms of the question of complication. We live in a complicated world. The universe has incredible complication. And we as people, you know, it, sometimes I have the feeling, well, I, I refer back to, remember the space program? The rockets were always considered to be so involved, so complicated, that it was amazing that they work, and sometimes they did not work. Um, and I think that's the way the human body is. It's so complicated that you have to expect some things to go wrong. Medicine is getting better. It, it can fix some things, but unfortunately, at this point, there are things that it cannot fix. But I, I think that we could be in awe of, of the sophistication, the complication, just listening to the music. You had different people playing different instruments in different ways. And it, it was just amazing to hear all that and that people were able to do that. So I, I think we should give our bodies a little, you know, <laughs> we can give, kind of cut our bodies a little flat because they're complicated uh, devices. Yes. Well, some of this is incorrect. The body is not is not created, you know, this is allegorical, because the body was created by evolution and it wasn't created perfectly. If the body were created perfectly, we wouldn't have an appendix. Various other things that could get us into trouble that are no longer useful. We wouldn't have that if a perfect God created a perfect body. Mm -hmm. I think I'll, I think that's perfect. I agree. <laughs> this idea of evolution versus whatever else you want to put on the other side is a con the conversation that happens a lot. Um, and I think it's a fascinating one because science is real. And there's a we have to find that balance between science and the wonder of Judaism and our beliefs and our faith. But that is a whole conversation for another class. Right. <laughs> um, we're not perfect. We're not perfect because in our minds, perfect would mean that we can't break. And life is a terminal condition. The minute you're born, you, you're going to die. You know that you're going to die. So this is not going to last forever. And, and I think the point of all of this is to recognize that things will go wrong, that this will end, but savor is the word of the year for me. Savor every good day and do everything you can. Who was it who said I do everything now to keep myself healthy? I think it's the rat It's not running over there. Do we have to each do our part? <clears throat> and then comes in along with it the awe and gratitude for having been born, Howard, for having been born, being the lucky sperm and egg combination, okay. and for every day of life that we enjoy, uh, that we can appreciate, and stuff that we love, and learn to love it. So I think it would be, and I'm, you know, as a physician, I understand evolution. And I firmly believe that God created evolution. I don't see a rift between the two. So I don't want to put that. Yeah. We, we're talking about the body. And I think we also have to include the mind, the emotions. You know, I've seen so many people whose bodies are running well but their mind is not. And I think that when we thank God, it's, it should not be just for the way our physical bodies, you know, the, you know, the stomach, the et cetera, et cetera, work, but it's the way our emotions, our mind, our thinking works. And as I've gotten older, I, the mind 
and, and I see people whose minds are not working perfectly anymore. So the mind has become very important to me. Yeah. Okay. All right, we have about five more minutes. So we'll continue with this conversation um, about uh, our having the different three. Um, if you're interested in the future, the other side was about Elohim Shema, and those are also on YouTube, but y'all had so many good thoughts and conversations that we um, just focus on our chariot star. But we have crew probably for time for probably like two or three more um, thoughts on our prayer. And then I believe we have some breakfast. Or yeah, we have some Yeah. Um, so, anyone have some last thoughts or comments about our, our three different interpretations of um, Asheri It's our prayer, or just reflecting on what we were talking about when we were just looking at the original translation and how these new interpretations kind of have changed your reflection or um, made you think differently about your original reflections on the prayer. Yes. I just want to bring it all together that now when I see this prayer that I said over and over and over again, it has such new meaning with the, the things that you brought out this morning and the music, it, it really is very helpful. And, and I look at it in a totally different way. Yeah, I think that we put it all together um, and they are, they are different. So it's like a centripetal divine force. So it's going to be not always be the same, but the end it is going to be, it will be the same because we are equal as human beings. A hand over here. Susan, Susan's comment about feeling gratitude for the mind made me think that, um, unlike what I think our first thought is, which is that gratitude is the opposite of complacency and just taking things for granted, um, gratitude is also the opposite of the fear that um, people have about. What could happen to their body and their mind. Mm -hmm. I find in my age that conversations that you have with friends about fears for the future have much more to do with using um, mental capacity mm -hmm. than, than, than physical capacity. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. I don't think that, I don't think that. When you're young, you could read this prayer and think about that, but it just shows how prayers are changed for us as we go by. Yes, interpret your prayers based on your lived life experience. Right. Right. Any other last thoughts or comments? Well, thank you. That's a good okay. thought. Thank you for all, Megan. Thank you for a wonderful, a wonderful teaching uh, this morning. So, um, friends, we have uh, brunch set up in the library. So please join us over there if you can. Visit with Megan. Enjoy some food. We're gonna let's do a mozi so we can head in and, and eat. Uh, real all right, everybody online, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you later. Have a great day.